Oh, hello again, everybody. Dr. Leo Cool here, and I'm in the middle of writing a letter to my pen pal. Ever done this? I've been writing letter to my friend Penelope Pendernoodle for years. I call her Penny for short. She was born in Pennsylvania, but now is living in Penmark. What's that? You think Pendernoodle is a phony made up name? Well, I'm not going to mention this to Penny's sister, Pennifer. In case you have not figured this out, today I'm going to talk to you all about pens. Welcome to Dr. Cool's Fun School. Now, there are many kinds of pens. There are gel pens, fountain pens, marker pens, and pig pens. Now, pens have been around for a long time, but they have also evolved and changed. That sort of thing, hap pens. <clears throat> now, the first pens were made out of thin reeds and were used in ancient Egypt, where they would write on a plant-based paper named papyrus. The word paper comes from Greek, but it is based on the word papyrus. Papyrus is a pretty versatile plant that the Egyptians used to make sails, clothing, mats, but most of all, paper. Eventually, papyrus was replaced by parchment paper, so folks would be able to use a quill pen, which is a bird feather. Now, swan feathers were considered to be the best for quill pens, but they were expensive, so regular folks would use goose feathers. Quill pens were used for hundreds of years, and the Constitution of the United States was written in a quill pen. Now, the first pen with an ink cartridge was commissioned by an African caliph in 973 AD. One day he got honked off that the ink would get all over his hands when he wrote with a quill pen, so he got someone to make him a pen with an ink cartridge. Pretty clever idea when you ink about it. <clears throat> In 1938, Laszlo Biro, a Hungarian journalist, invented the ballpoint pen. Millions of these are sold every day and even more used. Well, I gotta go finish this letter to my friend Penny. I'm Dr. Leo Cool, and I'll see you next time on Dr. Cool's Fun School.